Good morning, wherever you are. I hope it's a beautiful day. I hope it's really positive for you. I'm really pleased, as always, to be with you wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon. No, it's actually good morning to Phoebe Francis. Good morning and greetings to you all. Mohammed Shukri, good morning. I know it is to you as well. Yeah, good morning to you, Graham, Phoebe from Bahrain, and everyone who's watching this. Very good. Now, we are, as you in, we so, kind of sometimes say, Leadership Challenge Middle East. And just really briefly, I am a certified master of the Leadership Challenge, and I've been a certified master for uh, quite a few years, quite a few years. Uh, and uh, my two colleagues are certified trainers of the Leadership Challenge, the three of us believe passionately in the leadership challenge and otherwise we wouldn't be here. Otherwise we wouldn't be talking about what we talk about every week. And that is about leaders and hopefully leaders becoming better leaders. So today, what happens if leaders in the workplace are having to deal with now remember, leadership. Everyone is leadership. Uh, sorry, leadership is everyone's business. Um, but what happens if the leader is having to deal with unethical or really difficult behaviour from, let's say, the person who is managing them? So let me set the context. The unethical and difficult behaviour is coming from this level. If we can put my fingers there and say at the higher level and the people reporting to that person are confronted with what could be unethical behaviour, difficult behaviour. So how does that sound to you, Muhammad? And what part of this do you see as we cover first in the time we have? I see a, a, a situation where someone is stuck. Let's take Ahmed. Ahmed works in a department. He is already one of the... Um, heads of a department, but he reports to someone he sees as an unethical manager. Now, that unethical person um, also is stuck because he's stuck within his unethical behavior. People who um, demonstrate uneth unethical behaviors, they are stuck. Why? Because you don't resort to unethical behavior if you know how to do it otherwise. So people who don't know how to manage, how, how, how to lead people, they resort to the path of least resistance, the shortcuts, they shut off people, they silence opinions, and they end up being unethical. That person is also stuck within his unethical behavior. We wish him, we, we, we cannot treat him as a criminal fully because there is an opportunity for him to grow and become a leader because leaders are never unethical, right? So I see that situation where Ahmed has to deal with his boss who is unethical. I also see a situation that the, uh, the whole organization is stuck with an unethical manager who is doing damage to the teams below. Sooner rather than later, some of these um, talented people might leave because of that unethical manager. I'm just drawing the whole picture before we go ahead and address it. Stuck sure. situation, the unethical man leading people who are stuck with him and the organization who are stuck with this person. Let, let me make a comment about leadership and ethics. And I, I, I believe that if a leader is demonstrating unethical behavior, he then has let go of leadership. Because to me, unethical behavior does not fit in with leadership. It's like crossing the line. If you are unethical, if you're micromanaging, if you're difficult to, you've lost the idea and the, and the, and, and the, the concept that you can be called a leader because quite simply, leaders don't do this. We call them something else. And one other point that I will make, and then I really want Phoebe's, Phoebe's input on all that we've said, is that typically the person that you are referring to, male or female, could be him, could be her, who is unethical at this level, they don't know or they wouldn't say that they are unethical. 
I'm sure if we said to this person who was doing this, do you think you're unethical? No. This <laughs> is a conditioned behaviour for them and quite often the only way that they know to do it. But it's unethical or it's difficult. Phoebe, the wise one. Uh, a lot of thoughts coming and going through my mind at this point. And as, as you mentioned, you know, when, when we have unethical behavior, you are not a leader. And I just want to again stress on that part. In, in leadership, you know, what, what, what happens when we have an unethical practice? Now, imagine that you are modeling unethical practice there. And there is a huge chance of the culture of the organization becoming unethical. And yes. when yes. that happens, you know, you can sense people gossiping about that challenge when they feel that my values are not aligned here. The level of stress increasing in that space were people feel hesitant to be there. And we have experienced places where when, when unethical practices are seen, sometimes, you know, other members find it extremely difficult to point it out. And as you just now shared, the person in that position may not see him as doing it as unethical. And that becomes yes. the norm. And, you know, as, as in leadership challenge, we know that modeling the way is one of the practices of leadership. And here that is not happening because what, what, what is happening is you are, you are taking the organization into a dangerous territory along with the, when, when I say organization, the people around you. And we, we can see the rate of attrition going up. We can see the customer service levels going down. We can see reputational damage arising in those situations. We can see no one is inspired. We, we can see complaints emerging within the organization. So it, it creates a, what we call a situation where everyday operation get expensive. So I, I, I want to bring in you, our attention, you know, the leadership, five leadership practices, which highlights what behaviors as a leader I should be following. That's my initial thoughts, Grant. So if I was those team members and someone at the other level, the next, next level up, is the li living values that are uh, dissonant with my own values, that there are values that I don't align with, Let's just say that one of my values is honesty. And if I'm seeing the man above or the woman above being dishonest, do I want to be there? How will I feel in that environment? What sort of things can I do in that environment when I'm observing the behaviour of this person who is being unethical, who is maybe even covering up certain things that he or she might be doing, who is maybe even bullying uh, the team members? And as team members, we don't feel comfortable. Of course, we can leave. We know this, the old, old line which says people don't leave organisations, they leave managers. They do leave unethical managers. But what can we, what could the people at that level who are being managed and done so unethically, whose values are being compromised every day when they are there, because they're working in an environment that is somewhat alien to their beliefs and values, what can they do? Well, uh, when I mentioned when I mentioned Ahmed, Ahmed is a fake name, borrowed name for a true case. All right, and I know that case uh, in particular, and I discovered from uh, the uh, reporting of that story to me that. The people managed by that unethical manager uh, are split. And that's why I nodded and agreed with Phoebe. Why? Because some of them actually joined the bully. A man in power and 
what else how else to uh, appeal to him approach him get his uh, approval other than being like him or approving his behavior and that's what some of ahmed's colleagues did uh, other uh, people f from the same department didn't like but they cannot do anything ahmed however is uh, refusing to join uh, the gang all right and he is looking for ways to get out of it. Now, if we are talking to these people at this level, never, ever, I just cannot say more than what uh, Phoebe said, don't be another bully and don't be another unethical uh, person just because for this moment, at this time, you feel you are uh, being satisfied with this feeling that your needs are filled just because you joined. You never know when things change totally and you become a disaster and you will be flushed out of the way. Morality will always last longer. Un unethical behavior will not last long. So for, for one, at least I'll tell everyone in that department, do not mimic, do not model. That's not a way to model. When we say model the way in leadership challenge is model the uh, leadership and leadership is never unethical. Well, I hesitate to to say that what I'm what I'm going to allude to or I'm going to talk about is uh, the case that, that you're referring to. And but let me just say this: that it is well known that narcissists uh, have people join with them in their behaviours, and that if someone is working with someone who is Clinically, perhaps uh, under psychological terms, a narcissist, and I, when I say that, I'm you know so often we use words about someone else's behaviour with the full without the full understanding of what that word means. So it's easy for people to say, "Oh, he's a narcissist," without understanding the full range of what comprises that narcissistic behaviour. Mm. So I'm being a little bit careful about this, but also, I, so therefore, I don't want to say that the person that you're talking about in in Ahmed's case is a narcissist i'm not i'm trying to be careful about that but people can go into that other person's orbit and follow what they are doing they will be yes. compliant because he or she wants this done and they do it they believe they have no other choice and they accept that whereas ahmed is saying my values the person i am and my experience and all of my dealings this is totally uncomfortable for me because I have a strong set of beliefs in what is right and what is not right, what is therefore ethical and what is unethical. And and I'm being my values are being compromised in terms of what this other person is doing. And I believe it's not right for myself or for the and I'm yes. not comfortable, but it's also not right for the organization. <laughs> Phoebe. Yeah. Uh you know, uh, this this is reminding me about uh, the concept of psychological safety, which is one of the key research areas which we see and how psychologically safe environments are uh, productive, innovative, and flourishing. Now, as as we listen ourselves, you know, when, when we see unethical behaviors, especially from... Uh, I will say in those uh, people, I will say in people in positions of authority in an organization, what, what, what happens is, you know, the power structure in those workplaces, the power structure means the hierarchy defined based on the organizational rules. And because of that, this aspect, people find it uncomfortable to deal with such people in positions of authority that displays unethical behavior, which, which creates the anxiety in the system. Now, when, when, when that anxiety emerges, we, we, we can see it slowly impacting the, as we just discussed, the, the body, you know, our, our body start to react to those uh, anxiety, which we experience in our workplace which actually shuts not only the very engaging people who are displaying leadership behavior in that workplace, but it also creates, we can see arrogance in workplace, 
we can see the way in which bullying happens in those places. We, we, we can also experience poor performance and attitudes emerging. Absolutely. And, and out, outcome is the employee relationship goes into a toss. And, 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 and 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 it it creates uh, if if we go uh, and in this modern world uh, when people are more conscious of what culture i like to work in yeah yeah we we, we have uh, uh, in these days we have uh, the google reviews the glassdoor reviews where when people are quitting they they share their experiences and the cost of talent attraction goes up so i i want to humbly request those who have uh, such experiences of unethical behavior in from people uh, who are in the positions of power yeah it, it it is also something which we have to see whether we want to be staying in that space yeah and in terms of do i do i want to stay there some people feel that they don't have a choice I have this job. I've been, and, and let's give a couple of hypotheticals. Maybe this person has been appointed, and we'll come back to that setup in a moment. But maybe this person has been appointed to this role, and I have been working in this division or and this department for, and certainly the company for thirty years. And I'm now confronted with someone whose behaviour is dissonant. It is, it is disrespectful. It is, it is um, unethical. And I can might even think, well, I don't want to be physically in this environment. I don't even want to have connections with with what this person is doing. But I can't leave because w where would I go? Well, they could apply for a transfer to another department. Why do you want to leave? It might come up from the HR department, sure. Um, but they might feel trapped and they don't feel that they can leave. The, the feeling of being trapped also would, would impact on those people deciding perhaps to go with this person's behaviour and to be complicit because they feel they have no choice. Um, but from a cost perspective, as we know, there is a huge cost of poor leadership. And this is a little bit more specific because we know that from what we're talking about, that people will leave. We know that productivity will go down because people don't enjoy being there. They don't want to perform. And so this is going to impact on the, specifically on the organisation more than just the simple the, uh, concept that we talk about of broadly poor managing. When this particular type of behaviour, which is unethical, is driving the negativity. Mohammed. I can add also, so the last word we have uh, as per time for the P for leaders or future leaders who are sudden, who suddenly find themselves reporting to someone above them. I mean, I uh, wrongly called as leaders, but they are unethical. It's not just not to model them or mimic them, but also learn from them. So you see um, that bad behavior can tell you one it's telling you one message if you despise this if you hate this if you feel the bitterness and pain for someone reporting to him uh, be careful put extra shields you never know how slowly you might absorb their behavior one day you'll become a leader you think you're a leader but you are doing the same behaviors yes. and you are producing the same pain I'll tell you, by that time, it's too late to fix yourself. It's too difficult to fix yourself because slowly being boiled as a frog, you don't know you're dying. We know that metaphor, right? So you will deny that you are uh, an, an unse unethical. Nothing is going to fix you. Like right now, you're suffering from your boss and you think nothing is going to fix him. Be careful you don't be. So learn from them and learn with the negative behavior to turn it into positivity whenever you lead your current teams or your future teams. Very good. Here's one quick observation. Whenever your people I'm coaching or working with are telling me, oh, my gosh, my boss, look what he does. He does this and he does this, and oh, my gosh, this is terrible. I can't live like And I say, wow, isn't this good? What? What do you mean it's good? <laughs> what are you learning not to do? Oh, Yes. Good. <laughs> I don't want you to follow in their footsteps. Uh, even though it's painful for you at the moment, you recognise that these things are wrong. And in this case, you recognise that 
unethical behaviour is wrong. It's compromising your, per your the person that you are and what you believe in. So one way possibly for this for people at this level and for Ahmed, would it be something to suggest that he could have a, have a discussion with HR and say to the HR people, I need to have a confidential conversation with you. This is what is happening. And if Ahmed has been in the organisation a long time, and I'm not saying that the other person hasn't been in a long time as well, but if that other person has been in other areas of the organisation, it leaves clues. Surely there would have been clues left by this person in previous positions, which then says, why was he allowed to get to this position where he is living these unethical behaviours? So, um, but Phoebe, I think it's your... <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. I, I will come back after. So I just rephrase the question because that is what, what the employees usually in this stage are thinking of. If he, this boss is not hearing us, someone should hear us. And that someone, of course, is more powerful, should be, uh, by definition, more powerful because they have appointed him or moved him or whatever, recruited him in that position. Since he has closed his ears and closed his doors to anything that improves the relationship, someone ought to do something. So now we uh, change our uh, speech, our uh, you know, um, a conversation to the to the people at the top. So number one, there's a big question mark. How did you end up appointing someone who might uh, kill the teamwork, kill the creativity, kill the morality, and possibly take some of the people out of the organization? Uh, what were your criteria when you appointed him? Yes. You already have big values on your board, on your website, respect, integrity, I don't know what, all right? And then you suddenly appoint someone just because he is, I don't know, maybe a senior or uh, or some sort of specific knowledge, maybe networks, maybe clients, I don't know. And shoving away, shoving away every other aspect. So that's a big question about your leadership. I hope I'm wrong. But since still you care about your organization, what are you going to do about that person? Are you going to follow up? Are you going to screen? Are you going to, I mean, scrutinize? Uh, do you have regular checks on the people working in your organization? Do you skip some levels to check on the people below him? These are some questions that come to my mind and maybe Phoebe can add. But let me, before Phoebe comes in, let me just say one quick thing. And uh, I would hope, given my experience in the Middle East uh, and some observation of what I'm about, the word I'm about to use, uh, but I, I really, really hope, and I have seen that, that this word applies less and less in the organisational context, uh, this word, this practice, um, but and I'm not a lot attaching this in any way to any organisation that you gentlemen might know, but... We know the word waster, that people sometimes are appointed because they know the person who's going to be, a, you know what I mean? And so therefore, where is the compliance? Where is the rigour of the, the appointment process and so on? So that may not, I'm saying, in, I'm not suggesting in this case, but sometimes that can occur. And the individuals who, who are working there have little choice, don't they? Because if... if yes been appointed because of this thing called Wasta, um, then they're not going to have much chance to to go to the person above who appointed him and say, we don't like this man or this woman. Yes, as an Arab, I can say Wasta is the name we use uh, when we want to describe what is globally a phenomenon, uh, nepotism. Yeah. Okay, nepotism. <laughs> and yeah. and yeah, it might be there, but in this global company, which I'm talking about, uh, there is no, because sometimes family companies, uh, they, they do that. Yeah. Oh, okay, let's not wait, make uh, Phoebe wait I'm long. I'm not, but I'm just saying for some people who are listening who might be relating to this, they might be in a family company where nepotism is an issue. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Phoebe? Yeah, uh, I, I think um, one, one aspect is it, it highlights how crucial it is when we, when we are identifying talents to positions of authority, what we, checks we need to do. 
And I think um, leadership challenge gives a beautiful way of doing that, focused on, you know, the five practices is modeling the way, inspiring the shared vision, challenging the process, enable others to act, and encouraging the heart, one of the crucial part. And when we see unethical behavior in a workplace, it is not encouraging anyone. And what 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 we do become our culture in that workplace. So when 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 uh, as as Muhammad mentioned. What kind of review mechanism I have with respect to seeing whether the values are being practiced in my workplace, whether, whether I have a 360 feedback process, especially with the decision makers about how they are uh, interacting with uh, their people, especially uh, pe people below them. And uh, we, we have to make understand that, you know, when, when people are reporting to uh, positions of authority, uh, many, many times people are, if there is a lack of leadership practices and best behavior seen, people may be responding out of fear. When organization is driven by fear, we, we can see more of these unethical practices being seen because there is no checks. No. When people are feared, they don't they don't uh, uh, report to the challenges which they see, and creating a vulnerable workplace. So uh, again, I, I want to bring in the uh, leadership practices inventory tool, which, if implemented, give an information about how that person is doing. And again, this not to be uh, because these uh, positions of authority are critical and crucial position which can make or break organization so uh, spending some time in the beginning and also especially with people in the positions of authority if we have a large team it is always good to have a check how and what behaviors are displayed and practiced in the workplace uh, yeah. can i add before graham graham can i add something uh, you know uh, you intrigued me really uh, because one of the companies lately I've been working with, they decided that the uh, values, which include, you know, being um, being open to people and uh, listening to all those things which we uh, preach the management to apply, they have decided they won't only preach anymore. They have embedded a criteria in the uh, performance measurement of the managers across the organization, and this is coming from the top man yeah. in HR. <clears throat> Sorry for that. So there will be um, a measurement, a test, a regular test of how each manager in the organization is demonstrating those values in numbers. It's like Google reviews. They will be reviewed secretly by their subordinates or constituents, as we use it in the leadership challenge, on how well they are listening to people, how well they are treating people, how well they are respecting, etc. And it will go in average numbers to the top. Guess what does that do to the managers there? No matter how ethical they think they are, they will be surprised and they will be moved to change. Here's one, two things. So, so often we here, organisations say, our staff are our greatest asset. Well, as Jim Collins said in Good to Great, the staff are not your greatest asset. Having the best staff is the greatest asset, right? Mm. You could have 2,000 staff who just don't work. That's not an asset. Uh, so how do organisations become successful? Because they build on the people that they have and that they create a culture where people want to be there. Therefore, ethics are critical. The behaviour of leaders at all levels are critical. So I mean, the organisation will say it's a family. Well, really, do you treat your family in the way that, that you are unethical? No, you don't. Well, you shouldn't. These are these are criminal families that develop this way. But, the, you know, you treat, you, you just to use the words on the website to say we treat them, everybody as a family, you've actually got to do that. And then people will want to be there. This is really, really important. So I, I think that the leadership is 
Okay, let's just say this. Let's just assume for one moment that the person who has prompted this conversation, this unethical leader, let's just assume that he or she, in this case, I think it is a he, has amazing technical skills that no one else in the organisation has. Which should we appoint? Which, which criteria should have more weight? Technical skills? or leadership skills? In my view, that he was uh, the best technical person while he was in his position. Then when he was promoted, transferred, whatever, he no longer, they will, the organization will no longer need his technical skills the way they did before, because now he is in charge of a bigger team and he is delegating uh, everything to everyone else. He is just uh, <laughs> leading the way, uh, so to speak. So it, the organization needs less his technical uh, past for the current mission. They need him to lead the team to company's next biggest goal, biggest performance, etc. And that, that what I just said, lead them. There is no technical there written in that definition or in that task. So yes, we b because of his past, okay, we don't just uh, reward him with something we have no need for his past or little need for his past. The decision if that makes sense. <laughs> of course, it makes sense. The decision used the wrong factors to reach that conclusion. They was they were judging his technical skills and the importance of them in a role where those technical skills were not going to be needed as much. But what is needed when he's leading the larger number of people is leadership behaviours, leadership skills. So they, they have prioritised in this case or rewarded him for his technical skills and have paid little attention to his leadership behaviours. My gosh. I, I just want to uh, bring that aspect here again, you know, and the five practices of exemplary leadership. And, you know, as Graham asked, you asked a question whether technical or behavioral aspects. I will say behavioral aspects stand huh. to be the priority when you are considering someone for a leadership position. And one more thing which we all have heard about, you know, soft is hard and hard is soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The soft behavioral aspects which drive and, and, and again, in the leadership challenge, it is very well written that the uh, modeling the way is this person whom I am selecting to the next level, modeling the way with his behavior. Second aspect, is he inspiring a shared vision for the team, for the organization as a whole? Is he allowing the people to challenge the process? You know, if that happens, innovation flourishes. So, is, he, is, he, is he developing more leaders that is enabling others to act as, uh, as developing people within his team? So, and finally, is he encouraging the he or her encouraging the heart of the team in the workplace? So I think these five aspects, if we can get it right, I'm sure there will be no unethical behavior in the workplace. But as I said earlier, this gentleman doesn't know that he's being unethical. He believes that this he knows that this he thinks this is the only way to do it. And it is wrong. Coming back really quickly as we wrap this up, I, I applaud the company that you mentioned who are uh, doing this assessment almost surreptitiously about how leaders are, are, are living their values, how they're modelling the way and how they're living their ethics and so on. But I, I think that's really good because it's going to encourage people to do this. But I would hope that in a couple of years' time, the culture is such that they wouldn't need to do this. Beautiful. That's what we're surely that's the end game that we this is what we are. We don't need to carry out these assessments along the way because everybody who's working here is ethical, yeah. is a wonderful leader, they live their values. We don't need to assess them because we employ them knowing that that's what they're like. 
and everybody loves working for them. Gentlemen, our time is up. We've gone a little bit over our usual time. Do you have a quick word as we wrap this up, or will I be unethical and say goodbye now? <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, uh, noticed that um, why you call Phoebe the wise man, all right? Uh, that was an aha moment for me today um, about the being contagious. Any behavior is contagious, especially if you are in power. So I'm going to take that home. Thank you, Phoebe. And that was very insightful for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. You know, uh, uh, because this is, uh, you know, leadership again or, or any behavior is a function of person and environment. And Graham mentioned sometimes the, the, the person who have this unethical behavior is ignorant. And that is where, you know, organizations should invest in developing what kind of leadership behaviors we have to have in our workplace. And we are here to help in that process. And especially with the research-backed findings, which we have from Jim Kozuz and Barry Posner through the Leadership Challenge and the Leadership Practices Inventory Assessment. When you have great leadership, you get great results and it's not hard. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I look forward to our coming together next week to explore even more interesting, even more interesting topics. <laughs> thank you. I great, get the pun. Great week. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Graham Moore. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>